Hey guys, we're going to be covering trapezium rule in this session. Let's get started. So all this time we've been looking at area under the curves. So here's an example here. And I want to find um, the shaded region here under the curve here. Now the equation for this particular graph is can be written as e of x divided by x squared. Or in other words, we want to find the integral of e of x divided by x squared between um, 1 and 5. Now, unfortunately, um, we know that we can't actually integrate this function. So what we actually do is we create a, a trapezium. I mean, that's why it's, called, it's actually called trapezium rule. And the way it works is that is we're going to create a trapezium that looks like this with the blue line, and we're going to find the shaded region underneath that area. So it's going to look like this. There we go. We've created a trapezium right there. Now, we also know that um, area of a trapezium, this is from uh, level one me measurement, as we might remember it, is it's half times base one plus base two times height. Now, in this case, base one is going to be the left-hand side there, and then base 2 is going to be the right-hand side, and the height is going to be whatever is on the x-axis. So if we write this in terms of x and y's, we're going to have half multiplied by b1 is actually the value of y, so which is going to be 2.7183, and as you can see, that value is right there, and then b2 when I estimated it, it was 5.9365, and that value is right there at the top there. And that's multiplied by the height. Now, height is 5 minus 1, which is going to be 4. And if we work this out, so that's 4 right there, uh, we'd actually get, um, we'd get the area of the trapezium, which we can say is also area under the curve. Now, note that it's not really correct because I mean we kind of know that the the curves actually below that blue shaded region so what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna see if we can split them up um, it makes sense in the next slide so instead of doing it as one trapezium what I'm gonna do it uh, now is I'm gonna separate them into four trapeziums because using it uh, well using four trapeziums here would actually be a bit more accurate compared to one trapezium. So from this point onwards, what I could do is I could calculate each individual trapezium and work out what the, um, what the area under the curve is. There we go. So that's the four uh, trapeziums right there, two in red and two in black. And if I work out the area of these four trapeziums and add them up, it'll give a much better estimation compared to just one trapezium. So writing the formulas down for these four trapeziums, so with the four trapeziums, before I write down the formula, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these y values, um, you know, some sort of indication. So for example, that point right there, I'm going to call it y0. That point, I'm going to call it y1. This one is y2, y3, and the final point as y4. And of course, I have the heights, which are all the same intervals, as you can see. It's going from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 5. So all the heights are the same. So with that in mind, I actually have four trapeziums altogether. I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down these uh, four trapeziums formulas. So as you can see, the first trapezium would be um, half times y0 plus y1 times h. And the process literally just um, repeats itself all the way to the fourth trapezium. Now surely we, we can't be wasting time where we're calculating four different trapeziums and then working them together. And I guess that's where the trapezium rule comes in, in handy because it just combines all these things together. And I'm going to show this how to do this in the next slide. So we know that the area under the curve is going to be area that trapezium 1 plus trapezium 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on. So what I'm going to do here is write down the formulas for each one of them. And as you can see, 
you know, there's four, four trapezium formulas right here. But what I can also do is I could actually simplify this now because there are some common terms in there. Like um, every one of these equations have a half and an h. And so I can take that out into the, um, take it out. And of course, inside, I actually have double two y1s, two y2s, two y3s, and so on. So it's just the first and last term gets um, used up once, but this, the middle terms get used up twice, which means I can simplify the formula to h over 2 times y0 plus 2y1 plus 2y2 plus 2y3 plus two, just 1y4. Now, if you can picture this with more than four trapeziums, I mean, that's what trapezium rule comes down to. More than four trapeziums we're going to have. Basically, the first and the last we only count it once, but all the middle uh, sides in the trapezium, we're going to multiply them by two. So, the generic formula of this, or should I say the general equation is, area under the curve would be h over 2 times y0 plus 2 times y1, plus 2 times y2, and it goes all the way just before the last, this, the last term. So the last term would be yn. That means the second to last term would be yn minus 1. And of course, the last term, which is yn. All right, guys. I know it's heading into seven minutes and, um, and all, but um, I've got a couple of examples. Just quickly, I'll go through it, and we should be done after that. So here's an example of a question. A curve passes through the following points. And use trapezium rule to approximate the area under this curve between x equals 2 and x equals 5. Now, we, we're not actually given the equation for this. We're just given some points. And we're going to use the trapezium rule to figure out the area under this curve. So what we do know is we know the equation of um, how to find the general equation for a trapezium rule. So with that in mind, the first thing we need to do is figure out what h is. Now, h in this scenario is going to be 0 0.5. And the reason it's 0 0.5 is because if you look at all the x values, which is right there, they're all increasing by 0 0.5. So that means h is equal to 0 0.5. Now we've got to figure out what's going to be y0 and yn all the way. Well, we've just got to figure out those things. So we can say y0 would be that, then y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, and y6. So now it's just a matter of substituting all these values into the equation and solving it. So h is equal to 0 0.5 divided by 2 multiplied by y0, as you can see it's 7.6, plus 2 times y1, which is 7.5, and the process continues. So we have 2 times 7.8 plus 2, point, 2 times 8.1 plus 2 times 8.2, plus 2 times 8.0, and finally 7.8, we're just going to do that once. All right, and you chuck this in the calculator, we simplify it. Our approximation should be 23.65, and that's, of course, the area, so we're just going to chuck on a unit squared there. Okay, and that's basically how you use the trapezium rule given a set of following points. Now, in the next example, I'm going to look at what happens if we're not given points. So, here's the next example. Approximate uh, integral of 1.5, between 1.5 and 1, of x sine x dx using the trapezium rule. Now, we haven't been given the points. So, we kind of need to decide how many, uh, well, how many uh, trapeziums you want to have in there. Now, ideal, in ideal situations, you would go with uh, 0 0.1 for this case because um, that gives you at least, I think, five trapeziums to work with. Um, but you don't want to go any uh, lower because you'd have to be working out all those values. Uh, let me explain how this works. So I'm going to put h is equal to 0 0.1, which means x is going to start off at 1, then 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, all the way up to 1.5. All right, now I've got to work out those y values, which is, um, of course, x sine x. Now, at this point, I'm assuming that x is actually um, the, well, sine x. Uh, I'm actually assuming that x is in degrees. Am I? No. 
because um, I'm sorry, not degrees, radians, uh, because these are whole numbers that I'm working with. And um, well, degrees, you know, just we, we don't use it really much. We just use radians. Stick with radians. All right, so working out these values, um, I'm just going to fly through this, guys, but because it's just a matter of substituting um, one into each one of these, um, well, substituting the x values into the function and calculating the corresponding y values. All right, once I have that, it's back to our original um, substituting everything into the general equation. So there's our equation. Now we said that, um, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention this. This is going to be y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, and y5. Um, yeah, and once I have those values, now it's just a matter of substituting. So h is equal to 0 0.1 divided by 2 times y0, which is just those values. I'm not going to read it out, guys. 2 times y1 plus 2 times y2 plus 2 times y3, 2 times y4, and Wi-Fi is by itself, so plus 1.496. And of course, putting this in the calculator and simplifying it, you should get 0 0.59 units squared. Okay. I apologize for the long, um, long video, guys, but um, I guarantee you this pretty much covers everything that you need to know about trapezium rules. All right, that's all for the session. Thanks for watching.